Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another CSGO map analysis video. Today I'm looking at Marine by Almas, Kite, and Victress. At least that's what their Steam profiles say. I'm assuming that's the name they go by, but you know, people change their Steam profiles all the time. Speaking of profiles, uh, I will be linking Twitter profiles in the description of these videos for mappers that are responsible for the maps that I'm looking at. I started doing that with the Kaizen one. I will go back and add that to the Engage one and some of the other stuff that I've done. So if you have a Twitter and I'm looking at your map, then it might be prudent to uh, let me know so that I can uh, appreciate your uh, your Twitter following. So today, this map, Marine, it's got a lighthouse. You know what other map had a lighthouse that I was a big fan of? Basalt. So check that one out, I guess. Uh, that means that this map is automatically pretty good. We're going to look at the layout here. I think it's pretty interesting because I've actually been playing this map for, I, I feel like it's been at least a six months, if not longer. So uh, on and off every now and then I would pop in for some bot games. And one of the things that I noticed was, obviously there's been a lot of changes. So if you're somebody who is not familiar with the original version of the map, uh, let's just say you, you missed it during its uh, its heyday. It definitely had a very, very different layout beforehand. And I guess probably some of the stuff that was a bit more the same is the B-bomb site and the approach to the B-bomb site was somewhat uh, preserved. But even that looks and feels very different. So we're going to start by going there. Obviously, we're in T-spawn. Uh, the B-bomb site itself is the result of... Uh, well, a long corridor, which I always have some issues with. Now, in the past, there was a window that overlooked mid that I assume was taken out because it would just be too overpowered to have that window here. I think it's around where this texture was. It was just a little bit higher up or something. So, yeah, ultimately not something that I, uh, I'm i grieving the loss of in a sense of, like, balance. But I do feel like it added something in terms of another reason, basically, to look over and, and, and be towards B. So I'm not sure if there's a situation where maybe that could be moved to another angle that's a little bit further away. Um, that, that could be, you know, some part of this could be opened up where you're not committing to uh, rotation, but you can still have some influence. That's something that we talked about in the Kaizen review or analysis video where I was talking about how I felt like there was an opportunity to have influence over other parts of the map and that would allow areas of the map that otherwise don't really do a whole lot and are only there to justify a rotation. It would allow those to basically have a bit more impact and, uh, you know, importance, you know, potence in the map design itself. Uh, also, not sure if maybe there should be a rock over there or something, but uh, it's just because the skybox and like the vanishing point or whatever looks really weird. But that's CSGO for you. Nothing uh, new there. I guess this door did kind of fuck with me initially because uh, I was just expecting to be able to open it or something, but, you know. So, there used to be a ladder that went up here as well, but uh, now it's changed to a drop, where if you drop down here, you can still go towards B by taking the right path, but you can also go straight out towards mid. Uh, this is almost like, I mean, obviously, anytime there's a drop, um, people will either be reminded of cobblestone, B site, or a train with pop, but obviously there's no ladder here that allows you to go back up it, so it's 100% like old cobble before they uh, butchered it with the new version. So obviously we're uh, we're sort of reminded of that, but I actually think that it's a little bit more like a, a more elaborate version, or actually a more simplified version of like the Mirage underpass rotation thing, where you can sort of pivot towards B, you're on the path to go to B, and then you can actually pivot towards mid, which will eventually take you to A. That's more how I would have liken it in terms of functionality. Obviously, in terms of the angles and the setup, it's not really like that at all. And I suppose you could also liken it to the cobble one, where you could obviously pivot out towards CT spawn area and then go A instead if you didn't really feel like hitting uh, B. But... It was obviously a very different map. So I really appreciate the fact that there is something to do over here. And again, sort of like we were talking about having a window over here or something that we could do use to influence and, and add value to some part of this map. I guess the other thing you could consider, although this would obviously have a timing impact, is actually moving the T-spawn a little bit further over here to the right so that it shortens this and makes it less of an issue, sort of attenuates the fact that this is a pointless corridor. Ultimately, it's just there to extend the duration of the, uh, the rotation to B. And that's something to keep in mind, I guess. But obviously, it would also shorten the rotation to be so unless you wanted to like find some other way to uh, maybe shorten like the CT rotation somehow as well. Although I don't think that's really a problem. That's something to experiment upon in general. I guess I'm wondering why there's not the you know just an open area for you to just walk through and go here. I mean, 
maybe with architectural changes, you could make it so that it wasn't uh, as much of a repetitive angle as walking through this whole area. But I actually think that an underutilized aspect of CSGO maps is that when you come into the map and, and you have like multiple ways to go down essentially what is the same overall pathway. I'm thinking like, if you consider, uh, like, like we'll, we'll contrast a few from existing examples, obviously. This is the best way to really uh, get people interested in the idea, anyway, and uh, illustrate what, what I'm talking about. So if you imagine, like, Mirage Palace, uh, essentially, Palace and the lower path into A site are just going to A from T spawn, but obviously they're very, very distinct passageways. Now you compare that to going apartments, there is only one passageway that you can go to. Now, obviously this isn't going to be the same degree of a, an alternate path as palaces compared to lower ramp, but I think that there's something about having a small sort of way to mix things up in terms of the rotation uh, where you're actually just sharing space, right? It's all ultimately it's it's very similar. So overpass is a great example where obviously in the bathrooms area, there's a ton of small changes in your pathing that you can make to actually make it so that you're taking completely different angles, that you're approaching things from a completely different perspective, even though you're really only like a couple of units away from the other angle that you could be taking. And that's a missed opportunity here where obviously it's not going to add a huge amount in the middle of general rounds. Like Overpass obviously has that happening in essentially what is the middle for that map. So it's a very high impact well-trodden area where there's a lot of people actually uh, messing around in that area and, and taking fights in that area. And this is not something like that. This is just essentially part of the T-spawn area, if you can call it that. But I still think that something like this could be really, really interesting for lurks, for info pushes. Now, again, if you imagine back to the Palace Mirage example, when CTs push through Palace or push through Lower, they get different varying amounts of information, and they also have different varying amounts of leverage if they're going to stick it out there and lurk and wait for the Ts to potentially pivot back to A. That's something that you don't actually have access to in this particular area, because if you're a CT and you push out here, really your only choice is either to continue pushing or try to isolate this one angle. And if you've made it up to this point anyway, I suppose you've already won in that regard, but giving the T's a little bit more of an option or giving the CT's more of a positional option, I think it's like a small tweak that could make this area feel a little bit more dynamic and would also facilitate multiple people, a bit more people uh, moving through this area. Like it's very, very roomy in here, but then it you know funnels down into this doorway anyway. So if you were trying to do some sort of B-Rush, the classic Ruski strategy would kind of be limited by this unless you guys had a staggered approach out, which uh, isn't always easy to do in matchmaking. Obviously it's a rather minor point, but just something to keep in mind. And obviously you could also make some architecture changes to this area uh, after opening it up to to make that exit even more interesting like maybe this fence extends out you know all the way over here so you've got a bit more cover when you're approaching and you could like reduce the cover that's offered by this rock so that now if you want the more, more cover approach you can take the side angle that's a little bit longer if you want the less cover approach if you don't care about that you can just you know straight up take this area and then if you're a ct and you've pushed out here and you're holding you know say you're uh you're holding from from this angle or whatever, like this gives you, I mean, obviously the rock would be further back over here, right? So like, say we're over here and like we're holding for any uh, T's that are pushing out the main path that w is what all that exists right now, that all of a sudden you still have to worry about this and that's something else to keep in mind. So there's a bit more tactical depth that could be added with a suggestion like that, something to, to consider. I, I spent way too much time on that, illustrating all the different examples. So we'll move on to the rest of the bomb site or the rest of the map, I suppose, but specifically the B-bomb site. So one of the things that I'm really interested in is how the problem of, uh, of being able to throw grenades was resolved. I don't actually know how high the skybox is for this map. It looks like it's pretty high. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty high. So <laughs> given that that's the situation, um, I do think that it's worth uh, pointing out that given the skybox is so high, there's a, a lot of opportunities for like crazy lineups. Uh, I think I had one over here where I was trying to uh, throw it at like where the bottom of the window would be if the rock wasn't in the way and it's a jump throw. Uh, so I don't know how useful any of these actually are. It looks like they land roughly in the same position, but you could like modify those to essentially have a wall of smokes that would wall off part of the B bomb site. So there's a lot of utility and tactical depth for setups, which I really appreciate. Now, a lot of maps will have like some sort of binary thing where one site is a bit more tactical than the other in terms of what opportunities are allowed. I don't really think that's the case for the A bomb site, but it does depend on how you 
attack into the A-bomb site, which we'll get to a little bit. That's a little bit of a teaser because that's obviously something that uh, you got to keep in mind for later on. So we'll talk about the mid-rotation as well, although I did show it off a little bit earlier. One of the things that was obviously changed a ton in mapping uh, for this particular map, it was this thing. It was just the fact that, like, there's so much... Um, uh, so much of this area in particular was changed, like how this was attached. I actually think it's fine in the current situation. Uh, if you fall down, you die. I'm not going to demonstrate myself, but uh, I suppose we can demonstrate... Uh... Hmm. Who should I demonstrate? Well, this is a prime... This is a... Ta uh... Uh, what do you call it? A thumbnail. Yeah, so you just die in situations like that. So uh, be careful about that. Uh, you... I, I don't know how I feel about that. I guess the idea is that you shouldn't... Uh... If you fall into the water, uh, like obviously if you made the water pathable or something, that would be a pretty big problem. I think it said you just like add guardrails or something. Um, well, I guess in addition to killing the player, because obviously if the, somebody could stand on top of the guardrails and that would kind of defeat the purpose of uh, of adding them in the first place if you're trying to like sort of hide movement or whatever. But um, yeah, it's, it's something to consider because ultimately like it does feel a little bit stupid to, to fall into the water and die. So I don't know how to feel about that exactly besides the fact that I think it's goofy. But uh, if you can attenuate that somehow, uh, obviously it doesn't really fit thematically to have guardrails um, in the same way that like Vertigo had a pretty easy like out in that respect. But uh, yeah, and you might also consider, I, I'm not sure if, the, I think maybe this was already tried at some point in development. You might also consider like shortening the uh, sort of whatever this is, the pier making it so that people have to like actually make a jump to uh, get across it from there. Uh, though that's not uh, 100% required, but something to keep in mind anyway, because it uh, it might end up being necessary to attenuate the uh, strength of a flank. Though that being said, I don't actually think that's a problem considering this position, basically the heaven of this area you can watch for this approach. And you can really tell that this map has um, had some consideration put into the cover because just by being in a position like this, uh, I can hold this, but I can't see the other side. Even if I position myself over here where it's a right side peak and I'm a bit more, you know, like I could just crouch here and, uh, and take a shit on that guy. There's a situation over here where, as you see, the the box here does prevent first contact uh, if the, the T were to hug this side. Like, the whole right side is not even even uh, there. And obviously you could also find some sort of smoke lineup that would take care of that position as well. Obviously not that smoke. Too bad. It, uh, I think if, if you actually do smoke the water, it's pretty funny from what I remember. Uh, I guess it depends on how deep the water goes in certain situations. But uh, yeah, so that's something to consider anyway. I do like the fact that there's so many different angles that the T's and CT's can take in terms of uh, holding the bomb site. I think that's really nice. And also the fact that the CT sided ones that, that are closest to CT spawn, which is all the way over here, if we take like the CT spawn approach to B, we can see that there's like this upper staircase that leads up to heaven that I was just at. There's this very long and roundabout uh, sort of L shape that brings you out over here um, into the bomb site itself. Notably, I don't think there's any way for you to get up to the heaven area without boosting. So it's kind of like cash B site, I guess. But I, I'm okay with that. I just feel like I, I do wish the rotation was a little bit smoother if you had to go from one to the other. But I also understand it's meant to be like a very powerful position that if you're trying to get into it from an awkward position elsewhere, it's supposed to be punishingly slow or whatever. So that's something to consider as well. Um, it is possible to stand on these boxes as I was just doing it earlier. So you could in theory boost. Uh, maybe also hit some Foon B-Hop or something to get it from heaven. Uh, definitely something that I think, uh, you know, maybe a long jump or something is possible there, but uh, not most players. Most players are not going to be able to do that. Now, notably, I'm pretty sure you can also boost on top of this, but I'm not 100% sure. It looks like you can. It seems like it's gameplay space, but obviously you're gl glitching through that, so maybe not. Either way, the only way to access that without uh, bo being boosted, even the, the, whatever this is, the... Uh, smaller box that's something that you have to do from a jump and obviously you'll be heard if there's a rush so it's something to consider as well uh it's also a one and done position though like i'm not even sure you'd be very useful in this the, the one angle that i can say is a t could be boosted on top of this to watch from the mid rotation into uh the b bomb site and this is a very powerful position if you already have ct control and you have like somebody heaven uh and somebody like all the way deep ct i guess so like the deep ct would be covering the ct flank Heaven would be covering uh, this position or um, perhaps like, 
like maybe they would be covering the the pier and they'd have to uh, be able to switch after uh they you know to trade anybody who's on top of the box over here and then top box can just cover the um position over here where there's a little staircase that leads in from mid so a bunch of different possibilities there actually i'm not even sure what that angle even looks like that might have been considered already let's take a look yeah i mean that's obviously not even how they would get into the bomb site but if that's the height level when they're done uh, sort of walking up top of the stairs. That's obviously something that could be traded pretty easily. So the idea of, uh, you know, me shooting this guy over here while my buddy uh, in heaven, like, covers the pier from behind and also covers, like, this area. I mean, at the same time, I guess what they could do is they could just completely ignore pier because nobody's actually exposed in a, a three-man setup like what I was describing. So you would actually have, uh, you know you'd have to worry about him coming over here and being able to flank, which obviously the the right the if you were like back out here with an op or something that would be pretty difficult to uh to handle uh and to switch on to but it's something that i think is uh there's very powerful retake positions for t's to be in and ultimately if you have mid control as ct you don't have to have anybody deep ct to worry about that you just have somebody like standing in the the mid area or even a little bit more further uh, far forward around this this is like the contact point between t's and ct's in mid so this would, this would be like the CT position if you were trying to hold mid. Uh, then you would have like maybe two people on each site, I think. Uh, or like the one of the A site players could probably just be like deep over here spotting. And the other one could be in mid. So it, it makes sense there. We'll, we'll go over all those positions in a bit more detail in a sec. But something to consider as well, though, is that because of the uh, number of you, you know, the number of options available to CTs, it does mean that you have to bear in mind that that's like another reason for these open skyboxes is so that the T's themselves can have a bit more um, opportunity to potentially do something. So like obviously that smoke is not really that useful. I'm just sort of shadow boxing here. But the, the idea of, you know, potentially smoking out heaven is a big deal because it forces them out into the open if they want to help and contribute to the retake or contr contribute to the bomb site defense. So that's a big deal. Um, it's one of those positions where one of the things that I really like is like if you if you think back to the, there was this epic moment in one of the pro games sometime recently where Furia as CTs executed uh, executed onto the B bomb site as a as if they were the T's sieging it because like they all ran down mid basically and, and and that was so epic because of the fact that like they had practiced as T's to do this and they were able to use that strategy in a in a different way as CTs right so <clears throat> that's a situation where I think. You, you don't have that opportunity if you don't have the opportunity for tactics and uh, set pieces in the first place. And so having that opportunity here means that if, if you essentially, if you have strong CT positions or strong defensive positions on a bomb site, then it opens up the possibility for CTs to use T's uh, tactics in order to retake, which is really cool in my opinion and something that we don't really often see used in the same way now pro teams probably wouldn't use it in the same way anyway because the i think the game state is rarely or the map state is rarely in a position where that that kind of thing is supported but it's something to think about and something that i thought was pretty cool all right so let's uh let's take on ct through mid and then i'll talk about where that goes so T ct's spawn here they're very very close to the a bomb site which i'll show off a little bit later and if they're going to go mid or B, they've got to take a bit of a longer approach. Now, mid is obviously a little bit quicker. Uh, you're pretty quick to this contact point. This is basically going to be one of the two main mid peaks that you'll see in this map. One of them is this peak, obviously the, the corollary being over here. From the T's perspective, I'll show that from T spawn. So you come out of T spawn, you walk down here, you just fall down, uh, get stuck on some invisible collision, and then... <laughs> Uh, then you're here. So obviously like a bit more smooth for the CTs, not just because of the invisible collision, but also because of the fact that there's something about the uh, rotation being, uh, I think just a tiny bit quicker, uh, maybe it depends on spawn. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. That being said though, that is not actually the most powerful peak. It's just one of the, like one of the two, right? I would say like there's two peaks that are really, really high uh, importance if you're going to be peaking mid. And the other one is coming from CT spawn. You're going to come around the A bomb site and then wrap around over here and post up because you actually want to be able to catch anybody who's, you know, sort of rotating to the B uh, sort of whatever you would call this, like overlook area. So this balcony area 
is really, really important to maintain control of when you're trying to hold the B bomb site. And you wanna make sure that the T's are not using this approach to get up those stairs. So that's something where you need mid control as a CT in order to hold on to the B bomb site. Obviously, if you lose mid control, and your A defenders are kind of weak, then that would also be a position where the T's could just take this little avenue into A. But the, the catch here is that obviously the T's can just choose to drop down here, like we talked about earlier, and suddenly they're staring you down. Like they can just do this peak immediately. So it's not something that is reasonable, I don't think, to expect the CTs to win out timing wise, where they'll need some utility to like flash oppers off of that angle. And then obviously if you're a real man, I guess you could do this, but this is like a suicide jump. Uh, there's been a lot of talk in the past about how jumping in the middle of taking a duel is a really bad move because there's a point in time where you're almost landed but fully visible, but completely inaccurate. And you need to wait until you've landed before you can take your shot. And that's a situation that you don't wanna be in if there's a high reflex situation going on. And uh, generally speaking, if you're assuming competence on the behalf of your opponents, that's not something you wanna do. So I'm not really sure if this is really that useful. It's certainly not useful in the middle of aim duels, but I guess it could be useful in, the, in terms of like providing an opportunity for an off angle. I do think that this piece of cover actually creates a bit more problems than it solves though, because obviously as uh, CT coming out here, you want some sort of line of sight. The only way you can get it is by a boost or by jumping on this this barrel over here. Neither of which are good solutions, by the way, because of course you're super open and the boost obviously requires a second player, uh, even if it is technically like a little bit safer or whatever. And that's just so that you could peer down over here. So ultimately what I'm getting from this is that the map makers have decided that CTs aren't really supposed to necessarily be able to inhibit the... Uh, sort of drop down over here and then B rotation. But the, the problem here is that they that also extends elsewhere because if I can get down here and cross as a T without being attacked because of the timing or because of pressure or whatever the case may be, I can throw a ton of utility that can end up being pretty impactful and not that one, of course. So I can like sneak off to the right side. I can throw some utility to completely smoke off that angle. And then suddenly, you know, with a couple of flashes or whatever, I can just end up uh, coming through here and suddenly I'm I'm into the site. So obviously it's a bit more simple than that or a bit more complicated than that. The CTs can use their own forms of utility. The Ts can probably find better lineups than what I just like sort of pulled out of my ass there. But there's a, a pretty big uh, win in favor of the the Ts themselves. And so that that's something that I think is um, maybe was not initially expected. You know, especially that particular lineup is super easy to do and completely smokes off that like back angle, which uh, they might be like holding from over here to try to like, you know, I guess it would probably be something like that, right? So they, they might be holding this really tight angle except all the way back. And then, now they've got to put themselves in a really nasty position if they want to come out. There's a situation where if you have like two or three people from the T's coming mid, one of them ends up crossing over here because it's really difficult to stop him be, given the timings. That's a situation where as a CT, you are in a tough spot to like hold on to mid control, especially if there's some sort of wall of smoke situation, right? Like if they end up coming up with some sort of smoke wall, that's when this barrel comes into play. But even then, that, this can be so easily pre-fired or assumed by the T's where they can just be watching you while they're like walking through. And that's obviously assuming there's no flashes and no counter utility that ends up also helping out from the CT's perspective. But usually they want to hold that to stop them from actually taking a sight, not necessarily taking mid control per se, uh, obviously map specific, but just something to uh, keep in mind as well. Uh, because obviously as soon as you hit that sight, uh, you know, or as soon as you take control of this like staircase area, this uh, B connector, it becomes really, really difficult to hold on to it. So I'm not really sure about this particular piece of cover because I understand it's meant to actually, in theory, support more complex firefights. Ultimately, I just feel like in practice, you would find some sort of lineup that uses this cover against the CTs by smoking off everything else and maybe even like a Molotov on top of this so you just don't even have to worry about it at all. Like you're just like, all right, well, we'll smoke this and then... There you go, there's your Molotov, right? So like, and just imagine, I imagine being a CT and trying to stop them from like peering out over here. Like obviously there's a gap in that one, but the idea is, is there. I think you guys can see what, what that would actually look like from a CT's perspective uh, and, and how little options you have for counterplay. Like what are you gonna do, flash through the smoke? You're gonna have to play retake. So at that point you would just have to cross over here and obviously you're giving your noise away the whole time if you're full running because of how uh, close and compact that area is. And you either go out heaven or you go out lower. And lower is such a long rotation and such a small uh, access point that you can just be smoked off over here as well. Like, 
You know, it, it, it's a uh, very uh, stifling if they end up having actual mid control. So that's something that I'm not really even sure what the CT counterplay would be. Maybe, maybe the counterplay is actually to put a CT in here. Like maybe, th maybe that's the the move. Is like, okay, uh, they 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 want to take this. All right, we'll just like Molotov it, uh, smoke it. You know, like from our angle, and then like it's easy. You know, an easy dub in that situation. Obviously, that takes some utility and, and manpower away from holding the front of the site. So maybe then it's like down to reeds. But yeah, I'm not sure. That that seems like a, a something that might not end up being that much of an issue. It might even just be like a stylistic flourish in favor of this map where that's just how that B bomb site plays in a very different manner than some other bomb sites do. So interested to hear people's thoughts on that. But ultimately, uh, something that I'm not 100% sure about, specifically the cover in mid feels like could potentially be uh, done away with or refactored in a way that results in a, you know, better gunfights, essentially. One of the things that I do like, though, is, like, the amount of uh, sort of, like, fuck you spots. Like, you can just be sitting over here on top of this bench, enjoying a picnic and getting some uh, lurk kills where they're not checking you. So that's some stuff where it's, like, if they do decide to go A, they've got to clear out a lot of things. This is almost like, imagine if Under Palace was, like, three times all over Mirage A or something on the approach. Like, that's, that's kind of what that reminds me of. Like, obviously, you can also do this and, like, set up an epic crossfire um, where you do, like, you, like, jiggle, like, over here to, to bait. I guess you would want to do it with with your knife. And uh, you, like, bait out some shots or whatever, and then they, you know, obviously that's contingent on you holding on to the, the A-long control, but it's it's something to think about. I, I think it's pretty cool. So the A-bomb site itself is uh, rather interesting because of the fact that there's so many different things that you can do to get onto the site. And like I said earlier, it's either tactical or more aim-oriented, depending on how exactly you approach the bomb site from the T's perspective. And that's something that I think is an interesting wrinkle that probably not a whole lot of other maps have. And I think in general, it does benefit because it essentially allows for, depending on how you execute onto the site and how you get your, your sort of strategy collected, it allows for different play styles to succeed on the same map, even on the same bomb site itself. It's a little bit more nuanced than just saying, well, B bomb site is the aim bomb site and A bomb site is the tactical bomb site. It's having a little bit more, um, sort of nuance there. So I, I really like that. So if you're going to go out long, I mean, the problem is that this can be shut down very, very easy because, you know, as a CT, you can either choose to like do a really defensive smoke here and that, that will slow them down. Obviously a Molotov would do something similar. If you wanted to push out a little bit more aggressively, you could drop a smoke over there and suddenly, uh, boom, you've got like this whole area, which is obviously very barren in terms of cover. Uh, but I th assume that's by design. So y you could hold like a bunch of different off angles there. That's where I think it's a bit more of an aim oriented map or, or reflexes or mechanics or whatever you want to call it, where at that position, like either you're going to kill them with an off angle positionally, mechanically, or you're going to get killed by somebody who's like got high reflexes or something. That's assuming you're approaching it from this angle. Now, obviously from mid, there's a bunch of different uh, lineups and technically there's a couple of different areas that you can go from mid. If you have mid control and you've pushed them back and you still want to do an A finish, you can actually threaten from CT and CT essentially becomes the new mid for, at this point in the map state where you have control to either threaten to one of the other bomb sites, either one of the bomb sites. And then at that point, you know, your your executors or whatever, your your A men can come in over here and, you know, they can do some lineups and uh, I don't know, I don't know any, so don't ask me. I, I wouldn't be very useful on an A take, but this is uh, talking about the the imaginary uh, good player that I, I have heard so much about. I actually have no idea what a good lineup would be because the bomb site is so weirdly designed yeah so it's very easy to go overboard and then you don't get anything but in theory there's some sort of lineup that you could do to sort of create like a wall of smokes around here like i'm imagining some sort of lineup that smokes off like the that part of the site and allows uh, essentially the the clearing of the front part of the site if if uh, that makes any sense you obviously would ideally like to either smoke or molotov this area so that they can't peek you like i guess this would be like a quad or something and so, you, you know, you throw some grenades over there to stop them from being able to peek while you're clearing out the front. And then all of a sudden you've isolated essentially anybody who's like lurking or out front or in warehouse, you know, looking along. Uh, you've isolated them from anybody who's holding more uh, conservatively on the site itself. And because of how big the site is, in theory, if you've got smokes in both of those positions instead of a smoke and a Molotov, you can just plant right here. Like that, that that's just something you can do. So I, I do think that that's a situation where the approach matters a lot more than the actual bomb site itself. 
in terms of how you're going to play out the rest of the site. Like if you're going to be doing a heavy long lean, there's not that much gameplay space for you to really have different strategies and have different tactics and different flourishes, at least as far as I've been able to find out in theorycraft. Whereas it's a lot more about positioning, very limited utility that has very limited positions and uh, raw mechanics. Whereas if we look over here, coming from either CT or the mid position or both simultaneously or some sort of combination, when you start to add in the mid potentiality, it starts to become a lot more tactical, a lot more possibilities open up for those who are a bit more strategically oriented. So that's something to consider as well. Something that I'm not really a fan of, I'm not even really sure if it's a bug or not or something, but this whole area has gameplay space and I, I was like bouncing, trying to bounce like flashbangs off of this earlier and obviously they just went in and flashed nobody. So that's probably more of like a gameplay bug than anything. Like I guess if you really wanted it to be a window, you could probably have it be you know, something else like it's not even like there's a window out here that like maybe a CT or a T could like flat throw a flash over here, similar to like Inferno Apartments uh, on the A-bomb site where you can like throw a flash almost what feels like it's going out of the map or something, but it's actually really useful. So you could either attenuate it through there and then maybe I would recommend like popping these some of these windows by default or something so that it's um, not as noisy to actually pop, but I think it's fine either way. And you could either add one of those things where it's like, okay, we can pop these windows and throw some nades through uh, train and, and Inferno style, or you, you just make it so that it's like a solid block that you can't break and lose your grenades through. Either one I think would be fine. Now, notably, there's a bunch of different opportunities for if you do end up getting smoked off here as a T, I mean, there's all of these little areas that you can execute onto, right? You can like throw flashes, you can throw, you know, some. I'm sure there's some lineup somewhere, somehow. Maybe I'll get something right the first try. So if we do like maybe halfway through there, uh, we'll see where that goes. Mm, well, I guess I just suck, but there's something that you can do here, I'm sure, that will allow, again, for more tactical options. But the biggest issue is like getting to this point and actually taking this control requires a lot more on the mechanical side, in my opinion, than potentially, anyway, like moving through here. Obviously with enough flashbangs, you can clear anything. But the problem is, uh, of course, like the, the one mechanical flourish that makes this a bit more nuanced than just like, uh, you know, binary A over B or whatever, is that, you know, you can have a bunch of different lurk positions and there's a bunch of different angles you have to clear. Don't really necessarily have a huge opinion on that, but uh, I, do, I do like this trash barrel. This is pretty epic. But uh, not, not many uh, opinions on whether or not there's too many angles to check or whatever. I do feel like maybe the bomb site itself is probably deceptively simple, but maybe it's too simple, if that makes any sense. Um, whereas I do think there's, obviously it's just like a bunch of walls and a big crate. In a, in a sense, this is actually a lot more uh, interesting, I think, than, than what you would might immediately think. But a general lack of cover that's interactable feels, uh, feels a little bit bad. Like maybe maybe it's possible to like land that jump or something, but even then you're just exposed on top of a crate, so it's not even that useful. Whereas like it's obviously something that you, is, is meant to be like ninja bait or something where you can you, you can like sort of use it and play around it, but you can't like duck inside it or whatever. That's where a situation comes about that it might be worth exploring, like opening some of these doors up, for example, and making it so that there's like a small interior CT connector. That that might even be more interesting because of the opportunities that it pre uh, presents the T's if they wanted to execute onto A. But that's obviously something that would have a lot of far-reaching implications compared to you know, some of the more tame suggestions like adding a slightly different angle on the B approach for the T's or changing up a bit of cover in mid. But yeah, I mean, I almost feel like I haven't even shown off the whole map because of how many different angles and p uh, pathways are already possible. In that respect, I'm a big fan of this map because of the fact that it does give you a lot of different opportunities. And as a, uh, a, a player who likes to see how many different things I can do to potentially uh, shift the game in my favor, and also a player who's definitely more on the positional and if you can call it cerebral, we'll call it that side over aim. Like I really suck at this game mechanically. So it's nice to be able to like out position and basically out brain my opposition. As a player of that kind of uh, proclivity, I'm very, very much a fan of the different strategic depth that you have and positional depth that you have to this map. Like I'm much more the the guy who's gonna throw some grenades and position themselves to like kill flashed enemies or whatever, as opposed to the aim star who's gonna walk in and like 360 everybody. So something to uh, keep in mind, I suppose, whenever you're evaluating any of my analysis on a map, because that there that is definitely a bias that I have. That being said, I think there could be a bit more complexity towards a long. 
Um, not that it really has to be there. Probably fix that. Probably fix that uh, weird collision thing or may just make the whole thing a little bit more open on, in terms of where the, uh, the T's are dropping down over here. Because I don't even know what I got stuck on earlier, but it was something like over here or something. Yeah, I think I'm getting like repulsed by some object or maybe this door trim or something. So smoothing that out might be pretty useful uh, just for like general gameplay sense and a uh, nice lighthouse, dude. That's pretty much all I got for you. So remember to check out the mappers who are responsible for this. If I can find the other two, I will make sure to link their Twitters. But I know for a fact that at least one of them is linked there. Give them a follow. Give them a smooch. And yeah, let me know what you guys thought of this map and my analysis of it in the comment section below. I would love to uh, see a bit more work done on this map, even though I know it's gone through so many different iterations already. And it's cer certainly something that I don't mind, you know, firing up and playing every once in a while. Also something I guess I'll put here at the end, even though it's uh, not necessarily specific to this map, but every Saturday we are doing game nights of CSGO that I stream on uh, this channel and on the Twitch channel at the same time. And if you wanted to join that, there's a, uh, there'll be a, a Discord link in the description. Oh, sorry, not on this channel, on my other main channel I stream this stuff, but the Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash pronogo. Every Saturday we do CSGO game nights. I'll stream some other stuff every now and then too. So we always play custom maps on those game nights. If you're interested or you want your map played or whatever, just uh, let me know. And uh, obviously, uh, like I said, there'll be a Discord link in the description to join the Discord server. And you could just say that you joined because you wanted to play some CSGO stuff. I'll keep it short and sweet there. And that's it. Bye.